In figure four contours, as shown here by Vernon Griffith, we see several different hip movements. Initially, the back leg kicks outward and around, which we can call extension with abduction, and then into an internal rotation position. The front leg has been placed in flexion with external rotation, and the knees on both legs are flexed. What's interesting about this movement is that because of the positions of both legs, they are held in place by the ground and tissue tension. So when the upper body comes forward over top of the front leg, this moves the pelvis forward from the top down, moving the pelvis relative to the stationary femurs. We call this an anterior pelvic tilt. Because most of the motion is occurring at the hip joint, this greatly increases the stretch on the hip and its related tissues. Without getting overly complex, the tissues of the hip, both muscular and ligamentous, run in essentially every direction. We have almost all motions of the hip represented here between the front and back legs. And the fact that this would be done on both sides means that we'll pretty much catch them all at one point or another. Pretty cool, right?